Hello 3D printing friends! Today on the BV3D channel we're going to make a social distancing robo-mouse using an Arduino Nano, an ultrasonic sensor, a servo, and some basic 3D printing. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back! Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to be making a social distancing robo-mouse. It is an ultrasonic sensor and a servo run by an Arduino Nano in a 3D printed enclosure powered by a USB power bank. Now I came up with this idea while making one of my Get Started in Electronics videos, which featured that ultrasonic sensor. I thought it would be kind of funny to have a servo raise up a stop sign if the sensor detected an object closer than six feet. And I thought it would be even funnier if all this was mounted on a ball cap. Well, here, I'll put it on and power it up. <laughs> all right, let me get closer and see if I can get it to trigger. <laughs> see, there it goes. Yes, it's completely ridiculous. Yes, it sometimes fails to detect nearby objects. And yes, it looks like a robot mouse. And that's why I love it. And for those of you wondering why this thing looks like a mouse, well, I wanted something to hide the stop sign so that when it was in the down position, you wouldn't see it. But that made it look lopsided, so I replicated it on the other side for bilateral symmetry. And then for better printability, I added an angle up from the bottom so that the overhangs weren't so severe. And that, coupled with the sensor for the eyes and this gray filament, really gives it a mousy appearance. So that's why. And now you know. And knowing is half the battle. The other half is red and blue lasers. So here's all the stuff that goes into making one of these little socially distant robo-mousies that rides around on top of your head. There's an Arduino Nano. It's best to get one that doesn't have the rows of pins already soldered on. There's one of those small 9-gram servos, the ultrasonic sensor, a USB power bank, and the 3D printed enclosure and the stop sign. Oh, and there's some wires to connect things. So let's go over how this is wired up. In order to not destroy the connector on the servo and to make the wiring a bit more modular, I made a wiring harness that the servo and the ultrasonic sensor can plug into. And I changed the pins on the sensor from facing down to facing backward. Now, if you want to build this project as something permanent or permanent-ish, you might want to wire everything direct to the Nano. Well, almost everything. It's probably a good idea to use a four-pin DuPont connector to connect the sensor to the Nano. Having less wire will make it easier to stuff all the wires into the enclosure. With the way I did it, everything fits, but just barely. Now, both the sensor and the servo need ground and a 5-volt power source. There are two ground pins on the Nano, so the servo's ground lead is connected to one, and the sensor's ground lead is connected to the other. The 5-volt issue is a little tougher. If you wanted, you could probably use a generous blob of solder and attach the 5-volt leads for both the servo and the sensor, to the single 5 volt pin. But what I did was use the 5 volt pin for one of the devices and the VN pin for the other. The VN pin is supposed to be a power input for the Nano. It can take up to 20 volts and it's connected to a 5 volt regulator. But we're going to be powering the Nano via its USB port. The VN pin seems to be connected to the USB port's power pin, probably in front of the regulator, so I'm using it as the power source for the other device. Now, I don't know enough about the Nano to know if that's a bad idea, but for this application, it seems to work just fine. Next, I've got the trigger and echo pins on the sensor, wired up to pins 11 and 12 on the Nano. And I've got the servo's signal lead, wired to pin 9 on the Nano. And that's it for the wiring. There are only 7 wires coming off the Nano, which makes it a pretty simple project. And next, there's the matter of getting things assembled. Pass that 4-pin DuPont connector, through to the front of the housing for the ultrasonic sensor. Plug the sensor into the DuPont connector and put a bit of servo tape, that double-sided foam tape, on the bottom of the connector. The sensor goes in from the front, so peel the backing off of the servo tape, slide the sensor into the housing, and then press down on the connector so it sticks down at just the right spot. And because the sensor is plugged into that connector, that's what keeps it in place. Insert the Nano into the enclosure the servo attaches to these uprights with two small pieces of servo tape. And once it's in place, 
you can slide the stop sign onto the end of its output shaft. Now, before you glue or tape the back of the enclosure in place, connect the Nano to your computer with a USB cable so that we can upload the code to it. The sketch is super simple, and I've got a link in the description where you can download it. But let's go over it real quick so you can see what it's doing. At the beginning, we are including the code libraries for the sensor and the servo, and there are some basic things like pin definitions and motion limits and creating objects for the sensor and the servo. Now, by having all of these variables right up front, you have one convenient place where you can make changes if you need to, like setting the trigger distance or how long to wait between distance readings. Down in the setup function, we'll get the servo ready for use. And then down in the loop function, we're kind of doing what you would expect. We're taking a distance reading, and if the reading shows something closer than we'd like, we're raising the stop sign. Otherwise, we're lowering the stop sign, and we're pausing for a moment before doing that all over again. And yes, on each pass through the loop, we're setting the position of the flag, either up or down, which means that if we go through the loop a dozen times and nothing is too close, we're telling the servo to move to the down position a dozen times, which is okay. It's already there anyway, and it doesn't hurt anything to do that. We don't have to track the state of the servo's position or anything like that. Just tell it where to go, and it goes there, and if it's already there, it stays there. It's not going to complain. So that's the code in a nutshell, or in a sketch, rather. Now let's get the code uploaded. This is a nano board built to the open source Arduino Nano standard, more or less. It uses, I think, a CH340 USB to serial chip, and you may need to install a driver for that. I did, so I uh, did. I'll make sure that on the Tools menu, Board is set to Arduino Nano, and also on the Tools menu, Port is set to the USB port that the Nano is connected to. And then I'll click the Upload button in the Sketch window. A couple of seconds later, the servo should start moving around. The stop sign is just a press fit thing, so if you installed it in the down position and the servo wasn't in that position, it'll just slip as the servo rotates. Then, when it needs to move the stop sign up, it'll be able to do that because there won't be anything in the way. But feel free to set the position of the stop sign so that when it's up, it's up, and when it's down, it's down. You can point the unit away from whatever stuff is nearby to get the stop sign to drop, and then you can put your hand in front of the sensor to get it to raise up. Hopefully, it's working correctly. If it is, unplug the USB cable from your new social distancing friend. The next thing to do is attach the rear cover. You can either glue it in place or use a little bit of tape, depending on how permanent you want this to be. I went the tape route. Now it's time to mount it on a ball cap, and for this, we'll use zip ties. You'll need four of them. Loop two of them over on themselves to make a larger end on the end. Feed these two zip ties through the holes at the top of the ball cap. That extra blob of zip tie at the bottom end of them keeps them from pulling through. Then feed those zip ties through the slots at the front of the housing and slide another zip tie down onto each one of them. It kind of ratchets down along the zip tie and keeps the housing held to the ball cap. Now don't zip them too tightly, you just want it to stay put. Then trim the ends off of the zip ties. Next, because we don't want to be tethered to the computer, we need portable power. A USB power bank is absolutely perfect for this. I have this one that would probably power this thing all day. If you don't have one handy, you can find them cheap on Amazon. So how do we fasten it to the ball cap? Zip ties, of course. Everybody loves zip ties, especially engineers. On mine, I just zipped it to the adjustment strap at the back of the ball cap to keep it in place. Now just plug a USB cable from the power bank over to your social distancing robo-mouse. Turn on the power bank, and on those days where you have to mask up and head out into this weird, wonderful world we're currently living in, whenever someone gets too close, your socially distant robo-mousey will tell them to back off. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go print something cool while maintaining a safe distance from one another. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end of the video. And thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. 
If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. If you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. And don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in this video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. Now, I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at, too. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.